Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about passing variables to methods and constructors. I'm going to open up my website here, javacjava.com, click on my menu, select the Java OOP Tutorials, which is my object-oriented programming tutorials page. I have more tutorials on my main tutorials page. I'm going to scroll down here to pass variables to methods. Learn how Java supports only the pass by value technique. So passing variables to methods and constructors tutorial. When we pass a variable as an argument to a method or constructor, we are utilizing a pass by value technique. If we invoke a method or constructor that contains a parameter list in its signature, we must pass a corresponding list of arguments that match that signature. The, argu the argument list can consist of literals, primitive variables, or reference variables. It is important to understand that the values of the actual argument variables initialize newly created parameter variables. I'm going to say it again. It is important to understand that the values of the actual argument variables initialize newly created parameter variables. With regards to passing reference variables into parameters, you may hear someone say that Java uses pass by reference, but that is incorrect. Java only supports pass by value. Okay, let's go ahead and come down here and code and cut and paste some code, I mean. So we'll highlight all that, hit Control-C to copy, and, or right-click and select copy. I'm going to go ahead and move the browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop here, but if you don't, you can create one in two seconds by going new shortcut, type in CMD, next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open up the command prompt, type in Java C which is the Java compiler. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing a Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly prior to continuing the tutorials. Okay, I'm going to type in CLS. I'm going to type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells, tells it to go to the root. And I'm going to do an MD Java, which is make directory Java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'm going to create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. And then I'm going to make another directory and I'm going to call this pass um, yeah, variables. I'm just going to call this pass variables. And notepad pass variables.java. Pass variables.java will be the name of our source code file, also known as our compilation unit. V to paste, and we'll save this out. Okay, um, what we've got here is three classes, a very simple box class with um, three instance variables, and they're in no way encapsulated or protected. We just want to go ahead and give full access to these things. That'll help demonstrate this principle here. And then we have this um, this class Acme, right? And it has one method called pass by value, okay? And it has three parameters in its signature here. The first is an int called param literal, and the second is an int called param int, and the third is a box type called param box. Okay? And this is the first time I've showed you guys how to do this, but I figured now is kind of the appropriate way to do it. We'll kill two birds with one stone, and you should understand this pretty good. Okay, um, before I go into what this is going to do, let's come back up here to the pass variables class. And it has the main method entry point here. And I'm just gonna go line by line here, top down on that. So first thing I'm gonna do is initialize a variable called argint to 99. And all my variables in the main method will begin with arg, right? All of my variables in the pass by value will begin with param, okay? Arguments and parameters is what that's short for. Um, so we got the uh, arg int initialized to 99, and we got a, which is a you know local variable to the main method here, 
And then we've I've got a arg box reference variable of box data type, and I've initialized that to a uh, the instance of a new box object. And the instance is basically there's a reference to the instance that arg box hold holds, right? And then I'm just simply setting um, three of the arg box members, which is length, width, length, height, and width, right? setting all of those equal to 5. I'm just making this really simple. Then I'm basically calling the print line method four times. First thing I'm doing is just displaying this string literal. A new line feed original values from main method and then ellipses. And then I'm displaying the using the print line method to display arg int, that string literal, arg int equals and then plus the value of arg int which up here will display 99. And then we'll say arg this literal, arg box dimensions, right? And then plus um, accessing you know the members of the arg box box object there directly, right? Um, length plus height plus width. It'll display that out. And then um, last thing I'm doing is just saying arg box equals, and that will just display um, you know the kind of the, the two string if you're watching my previous tutorial, but it'll display basically like box and then at and then a memory address or representing memory address of the object on the heap. So basically um, the, whatever the reference is to the object that our box is actually holding, right? Our box isn't actually the object, it just has a reference to the object. Right? Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new reference variable proof and it'll be of Acme type, object type, and we'll just set that equal to a new Acme object, a reference to a new Acme object. And, and the Acme object, of course, basically I'm going to use the reference to invoke the pass by value. Now here's where it's kind of critical here, right? These are the arguments, right? 41 is a literal, right? I was just typing that in there. And that's going to be received into param literal here. And then arg int, which is this int up here, is going to be received in as param int. And then arg box, which contains a reference to this box object up here, is going to be passed in as param box. Okay? And let's see. Then what I'm going to do is once that's invoked, right? The point I'm kind of trying to make is when this pass by value gets invoked, it creates separate copies of param literal, param int, and param box. Um, where a lot of people get confused is they'll think, okay, param box points back to the original arg box object up here, and that's not the case at all, right? Or param int points back to arg int, and then if we make any changes to to the parameter, it'll reflect on the arg int's value. Okay, I'm just going to show you that's not the case at all. So first thing I'm going to do is call the print line method and just display it like some dots and then invoking pass by value. And I'm going to add one to the param literal. So, but basically, you know, it was a literal as an argument. There's nothing to prove. We can't come back here and say the literal is worth that when we're back in the main method. Right, so we're just going to display that we can, you know, add one to the literal and print this out. Nothing to prove param literal equals plus param literal, which should display um, 42, right? So the, the next thing I'm going to do is param int plus plus. We're going to take this particular variable here and we're going to add one to it. And then I'm going to display param int equals and then plus param int. Now, some people might be thinking, okay, param int is just pointing back to arg um, int, and then so when we come back out, or after this is done executing, then arg int will actually be equal to 100. Okay? It's not the case. So, uh, then we'll print param int plus param int, which should print 100. Now, ignore these two lines for now. Now, param box, right, um, we set as 555 up here, right? And param box is a copy of arg box, right? They both point to the same object. Um, and I am going to change the length, width, 
the length, the height, and the width to 14, 14, and 14. Okay, so what do we think it's going to do? So we're going to print off the dimensions, param box dimensions, and then plus param box length, plus height, plus width. And then I'll actually print, you know, what param box, what the reference actually holds, holds, you know, which will say box at, and then some sort of, you know, memory address on the heap. Okay. So once we uh, are done executing pass by value here, right, the next thing I'll come do is I'll display a line here back in the main method saying values back in the main method. So after we've modified these values in the in the pass by value method over here, we want to see what happened to the original methods up here. So values back in the main method. We're just going to display basically everything that we had up there. Arg int equals now plus arg int, right? Arg box dimensions and then plus arg box dot length, arg box dot height, and arg box dot width, right? And then our box, and then plus the you know the reference of um, our box that points to the object um, in memory on the heap. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. So I'm going to do Java C pass variables Let's go ahead and compile that. I'm going to clear the screen here. Just clean clean this all up. Pass variables. It's the name of the class we want to invoke. And so here's what we get. So our original values from the main method, our int equals 99, our box dimensions 555, and our box is equal to box at and whatever this little hexadecimal representation of the memory address on the heap is. Now, now that we're into the pass value method, right? Nothing to prove. Param literal 42. Back in the program there, we passed in originally 41 as a literal, right? So nothing to prove there. Now param int equals 100, so we added 1 to the 99, right? And now it equals 100. Param box dimensions, 14, 14, 14. And the param box, as you can see, its reference points to the exact same object, box at, and then this hexadecimal memory address there on the heap. It's actually a hash code, but it's derived from the memory address, the internal memory address. But anyway mere semantics, um, semantics. Now, when we're done with invoking the pass by volume, we come back to values in the main method. Okay, so we can see arg int equals 99, so nothing changed on the primitive data type integer, and nothing will change on any of the primitive data types. You know, that's just, just a given on that. You can just take my word for that. Now, take a look at the arg box dimensions, 14, 14, 14. You're like, what? Say what? I thought you said that the, the one you know, there's a copy of it, you know, and, and one had really, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't pointing back to the, the arg box there, because, boy, it sure looks like it is. Yeah, they're both pointing to the same, um, well, they both changed, it changed it to 14, 14, 14 coming back out here, right? So when we're looking at arg box dot length, you know, originally up here it was 5, now it's 14 after it came back out of out of the uh, pass by value in the ACME class, which changed everything to 14. So the common misconception is that people will say, okay, well, it obviously passed by reference, right? I mean, it, it basically passed the arg box um, into this pass by value class. And that's not the case, because you gotta remember, so what we got is that arg box is merely a reference variable and it points over to this particular object sitting in memory on the heap, right? Now, because we created an exact copy, right? Like param box is actually a completely different reference variable than arg box, but they just happen to both point to the same object on the heap, right? At the same memory address. So it will change the, the values of the members of that object, okay? So when we come back here, our box, of course, is still pointing to the same object on the heap, but those member variables were modified by param box within that method there. So it makes it look like we're passing uh, by reference, like we're actually saying, okay, param box, um, let's see, param box actually just contains a pointer back here to our box, right? And we're really just, you know, modifying our box, but that's not the case at all. So here I'm going to show it to you. These two lines right here. 
Okay, we're just going to create a new, and we'll, uh, we'll call this, and uh, actually create another box reference variable. Okay. And then we will just um, assign the value of another box to param box. This is, this is basically exactly what's happening right here, right? When we say we're the argbox argument is being passed in at, to the param box parameter. It's just simply doing this, right? Param box equals another box. And that, does, that doesn't necessarily make it equal to one object or whatnot. That just means the reference is equal to the reference. They're pointing at the same place. Okay, so by creating another box, we can take param box and point it to this other box here, right? So let's go ahead and save that. We'll clear the screen, type in uh, Java C. Clear our screen, Java. Okay, now we can see we've got uh, originally 9555, this particular box object sitting at that memory address, and now we've got in there 141414 14, 14, pointing to another box, a different box object at you know, this memory address here. And then when we're back in the main method, you can see that our box is in fact, you know, still 555, still pointing to the same uh, object in memory. Okay. So I'm going to close out of this and close out, well, close out of that. I'm gonna leave you with some final thoughts here, okay? Um, Let's scroll down here on my website. So in this tutorial, I demonstrated the principle of pass by value using just methods. The exact same principles apply to constructors as well. Now don't just take my word for it. Uh, James Gosling, if you're studying uh, Java, you should know who he is. Once stated, and I love the way he put this here, you know, it's just, it's, it really, really drives the point home. Some people will say incorrectly that objects are passed by reference. In programming language design, the term pass by reference properly means that when an argument is passed to a function, the, invo the invoked function gets a reference to the original value, not a copy of its value. If the function modifies its parameter, the value in the calling code will be changed because the argument and the parameter are using the same slot in memory. The Java programming language does not pass objects by reference. It passes the object reference by value. Because two copies of the same reference refer to the same actual object, changes made through one reference variable are visible through the other. There's exactly one parameter passing mode, pass by value, and that helps keep things simple. And that's James Gottlieb, Gosling, sorry, um, the Java programming language fourth edition quote from there. So. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.